I'm Glenn Freeman from Morningstar, and I'm joined today by John Lycos, our Senior Credit Analyst. John, thanks for joining us. Good to be here. Now, John, global bond yields have been historic lows. How has that flowed on and affected Australian investors? Yeah, I think the, the low interest rate phenomenon is, um, has effectively transcended upon Australia as well. And so what, what we found is as the global benchmarks become lower uh, in, in their rates, then investors tend to uh, chase the yield a bit more aggressively. So this whole search for yield theme has been rolling on and almost increasing as yields continue to fall. So as long as global yields do continue to fall, we'll find the search for yield theme will remain quite strong. And what that does is that compresses yields, people chase after yield, prices become uh, higher and therefore yields go lower. So we've, we've been seeing it recently, there's been a bit of a, a slowdown in more recent months, but uh, it's still a very search for yield uh, centric theme. And John, you're speaking at our upcoming Morningstar Individual Investor Conference. Can you just give us some early insight into what you'll be discussing there? Yeah, look, because we, uh, my responsibilities really are around credit-based securities and interest rate-sensitive securities, you find that bond yields are generally um, behind a lot of the moves. So we'll be discussing the impact of this search for yield uh, thematic upon Australian hybrid securities and credit securities. We'll be looking at securities that we believe are most vulnerable to uh, yield shocks. In, in other words, if yields turn around and go back up, which securities would be most uh, impacted negatively, uh, which ones would be least impacted. So we'll be making some suggestions in terms of what we believe are the best ways to position uh, yourself in an environment where the yield does actually turn around and start, to start increasing. And John, Morningstar has recently released its first ever hybrid handbook. Can you just talk us through a little bit about what that entails? Yeah, look, over the years since working at Morningstar, we continue to get a lot of questions surrounding um, a lot of the intricacies of, of hybrid securities. They are very complex securities. In, in short, there's a reason why the prospectuses are 150 to 200 pages long. There's a lot of explanations that need to be put in there, a lot of risks that need to be highlighted. What we found was we would get a constant stream of similar questions from different clients. So we thought it would be very useful uh, for our investors to actually put together a bit of a handbook, um, almost a kind of a dummy's guide to hybrids in a way, where we outline just uh, how hybrids work, how they've evolved in Australia over the years, uh, what some of the key risks are, and then we go into uh, a section where we actually outline the, the securities under our coverage. We discuss um, them on, on a one-by-one -one basis, some of their key features, some of their key contractual features, and some of the key terms. So look, it's, it's never been done before uh, in, in this way within Australia. So we're, we're quite looking forward to uh, receiving the feedback, which we think will be very positive. And going forward, we intend to continue to publish this and continuously improve it at the same time. So there'll be things we'll be adding on, there might be things we'll be taking out. So uh, we'll be discussing this at greater length at the, uh, the investor conference. Now, just lastly, in Australia's hybrid space, there's a high concentration of banks. How can investors access good diversification here? Yeah, that's true. The, the majority of hybrids in Australia are issued by the big four major banks. Now, there's, there's different ways investors can diversify. They can diversify within the actual four bank exposure. They, uh, there are still some older style notes uh, which have different features to some of the new style notes. We make these points quite clear in our analysis. Uh, or another way they can diversify between the big four banks is they can go shorter in terms of their expected duration, or they can go longer. There are some notes which have longer terms. There are some notes which have shorter terms. So once again, we discuss these concepts at length in our analysis, and, and sometimes our preferences change in line with, uh, with the market around us. So uh, otherwise, there's, there's corporate names as well. Now, unfortunately, Australia has a shortage of corporate hybrid names. We'd like to see more out there. We're seeing Origin Energy, we're seeing Woolworths um, calling their notes uh, at the end of this year. At this stage, neither has suggested they're going to replace them. So that's two fewer corporate names that we do have out there. Then, nonetheless, there are still some good corporate issuers. Uh, Goodman, for example, is one that we do particularly like. John, thanks very much for your time. Thank you.
I'm Glenn Freeman for Morningstar. Thanks for watching. Thank you.